Even though the Chevy Orlando is named after an American city, it's not sold in the United States. When Chevy decided to make this vehicle available in North America, the U.S. said, I don't think it's going to fly. Not too many Americans are interested in a compact crossover. But Canada said, we know we can sell some of these. This vehicle is based on one of the best sellers in the country, an award-winning car. In fact, one of my top 10 cars from last year, the Chevy Cruze. Take the goodness of the Cruze, make it into a long, tall wagon, and you might have success. The main competition for this Orlando is the best-selling compact crossover in the country, the Dodge Journey, followed by the Kia Rondo and the Mazda 5. These compact crossovers have the ability to take six or seven passengers over three rows of seats. Nothing too much to look at. This is based on the Cruze, as I mentioned. The Cruze is one of the biggest compact cars on the road, so the Orlando has some good size. The windows are tapered down the side to give the vehicle a sense of motion, but really there's nothing too much to write home about when it comes to styling. You've got to remember why people buy a vehicle like this is for function. This is not an expensive product, starts under $20,000 and goes up to about $28,000 depending on which trim level you get. The thing is that these are looked upon as minivan replacements. People who don't want to be seen in a minivan because of the whole stigma of being a soccer mom and also they still want three rows of seats. But what you get with a compact crossover is limited space. In a minivan you have a lot of space back here. There is a little cargo spot behind here and then you can fold each each seat down for extra room but uh, if you really want space you get a minivan if you want some space and the flexibility that you can get with a crossover this Orlando has some options <laughs>you have to commend Chevrolet for coming up with very comfortable interiors. They've done this over the last few models. The Equinox, the compact crossover, and then you get into the Cruze, the compact car, and now into the Orlando. Each one of them has very comfortable seats. Must be something to do with the shape of the seats and also the foam that they use. Unfortunately, there are a bunch of different trim levels. There's the uh, base model, then the 1LT, the 2LT, and the LTZ. This 1LT, which is one up from the base model, only has one armrest for the driver, none for the passenger but the layout is very good a big center stack that's easy to read there's a hidden area underneath the radio where you actually have a place to put your smartphone your iPod there's a USB and an auxiliary jack in there the matte finish on the center console feels very nice but the rest of the interior is covered with hard plastic. The Cruise, for example, has the option to have cloth inserts on the dash, and it's broken up a little bit better, and I think it looks like a slightly more expensive interior than this Orlando. Other than that, they've done a very good job when it comes to comfort. Because the Cruze is second only to the Jetta in terms of space in the back seat, you get lots of room. Same thing with the Orlando. And the third row of seats, you flip the second row of seat forward and you can get into the third row of seats. A lot of products in this class, when you get the third row, they use a different material and a thinner seat. This vehicle has the same kind of foam you get in the first two rows, which makes it very comfortable. I'm six feet tall and I have room to get in here, no problem. If you want to go on a long trip, <laughs> if you want to drive to Orlando, this is probably not the vehicle to do it in. But you know, to take kids around or to go on short trips, even for adults in the back of this vehicle, there is plenty of space. The stats on this vehicle, it has a larger 2.4 liter engine because the cruise is smaller. You have to carry more people and more stuff around in the Orlando. So they've gone with a direct injection, that's high technology, 2.4 liter, 174 horsepower and 171 foot pounds of torque. So that means this vehicle gets away from a light and cruises on the highway absolutely effortlessly. I have to keep going back to the fact that it's based on the cruise, which is one of the best vehicles if you're going to be day to day in and out of traffic, sitting in congestion, is very comfortable, smooth and quiet. All of that is the same with the Orlando. It really is with the very comfortable seats, a great place and I use this term a lot to spend some time and it's absolutely true. You can actually get the Orlando with a six speed manual transmission. Most people are going to opt for the six speed automatic and you can actually shift it with the uh, shifter here in the center console. Console. So overall for comfort it's really excellent. It doesn't come with an available all-wheel drive system and it doesn't come with a V6 option. But General Motors knows their market. Most people are not willing to pay extra for that.
that kind of stuff, this will fit the bill quite nicely. So should you consider the Orlando if you're looking for a compact people mover? Well, one thing to think about, it's not available with all-wheel drive and it's not available with a V6. The Journey does have that as an option, but the reality is most Canadians driving in urban settings, taking kids to school and hockey practice and going to Tim Hortons, this will fill the bill. It really is a smooth and quiet vehicle. I can't overstate that enough. If you haven't driven the cruise, it is a really nice vehicle to drive and a lot of that is embedded in this Orlando. There could be some more standard features on the inside like blue Bluetooth and heated seats as an option, but it really is a practical vehicle. It's not expensive either. So if you are in the market for an inexpensive people mover, you certainly should try the Orlando.